um, I'm just going to do um, sort of a little bit um, to wrap up from our end, and then I think Vanessa's going to say a few bits and bobs. Um, so, we, when we were talking about the um, recommendations um, before Maureen, we were talking about the use of TAs in the classroom. If you remember last time, we also talked about recommendations on the use of TAs delivering interventions. They, they're typically out of class, but not always. And, um, you know, and, and this is, as we said last time, an area that we've done at the EF a huge amount of work. So this is probably the bit that we've put the most um, time and effort. And to cut a kind of very long, expensive, <laughs> and pretty extensive kind of program of research, condense it right down. Um, we've now published uh, reports of six really large scale evaluations of different TA led literacy and numeracy interventions typically delivered to, to either one to one or on small group scenarios. And as I said last time, that's everything from um, early years interventions that focus on developing oral language. Um, right through to a whole range of interventions that we did at the end of at the start of secondary school as catch-up interventions for pupils that had not um, reached level four at stage two. And uh, as we talked about last time, this second column to the right here, um, this is without a doubt the most positive set of findings coming out of the 120 projects that we funded at the EF. Um, it's not just that, it's probably one of the most consistent set of findings coming out of research full stop in anything to education. It's really unusual this, and um, to see you know, most, about 20% of the uh, projects have a positive effect, so you're seeing every single one of these projects reporting the positive effects. So, you know, you talk about the research that TA is not having an impact, here is an absolute cast iron you know, demonstration that they are when they're used in, um, in this way. Now what's interesting is, so these are trials, randomised trials, where we'll take 50 or 100 schools, half will be randomly selected to do the intervention, and half will carry on doing whatever they were doing before. And we look for the difference in attainment on the outcomes between those two schools. But obviously it's not saying that the control schools are not improving learning, but you're looking for the additional impact of doing that intervention. When we do that, we also look at what the control schools are doing, and we go and find out what they're doing and what kind of activities they're doing. And what we see consistently in the control schools is not a case of them not doing interventions. In fact, it's the opposite. We see a huge number of interventions going on in those control schools. So this, this is a slide. This, this doesn't really matter what's on it. Oh, you can see it. This is... Uh, Rob and I did a little session for about 20 schools that's on the MITRE program. And um, we did a session. We got them to write down all the interventions they were doing and where they were, um, obviously you can probably work it out, when there were more than one school was doing that intervention, put a tick against it. And there were 150 things or ticks on that piece of paper um, across those 20 schools. And we, we, we sit, we, we evaluate interventions a lot, that's a lot of what we do at the end. And a lot of these I've never heard of, I mean some of them are school developed, and we were just really over, couldn't believe how many interventions were going on in the school. And, so that, you know, I don't know whether or not that's typical, but it, it felt quite like a bit of an average picture. So there's something interesting going on here, is that when we're doing these trials that are showing positive effects, we're comparing it to probably too much intervention going on. And, and really what the lesson is, it, it can't be about doing more intervention, it has to be about the precision and the quality and the delivery of an intervention in a really precise kind of manner. Um, so, you know, the recommendations in the, in the guidance report you know, the first one's really positive. Yes, TAs can and will make a positive di um, difference to people attainment when they, when they deliver these interventions. But crucially, that's only observed in these structured settings with really high quality support trainings and, and um, kind of implementation, application. When they're in more informal settings, so when we met Rob, you know, they'd found from the DIS study teachers out, um, um, Maria said this yesterday, the way they started looking at TAs, TAs were predominantly out of the class doing interventions. People were on every single intervention, and they were missing out on the teaching. You know, they almost characterised, they were replacing the teaching. So, you know, what we're talking here about is, is supporting, it's, it's, again, it's the same principle, the use of intervention to supplement and enhance the, the, the teaching. Um, so, you know, the characteristics of these interventions brief, regular and sustained, carefully timetabled, lots of training, 
lots and lots of support and resources to deliver the intervention. You know, as I said last time, if you've got 15 minutes, which capture for only 15 minute sessions, by the time you've worked out what you want to do, 15 minutes is gone. So they, they almost stripped it to minute by minute. It's really, really tightly um, delivered, and they have assessments throughout of that. And you know, these are not, of course, the only interventions that will have an effect. Um, I can't say too much, but keep an eye out for an announcement in a couple of weeks. You may see more coming through, and they may be free. <laughs> um, but um, you know, so we've got, I think we've got more and more good stories to come out on, on this. Um, and I, I know, so one of the things that I think Vanessa's going to work on is trying to get um, some of these people to come to Lincolnshire. Um, we've, we've, what we've done in the past is we've organised an evidence fair where developers come along, they bring some schools with them, they do a quick kind of double act. The developer talks about the intervention, the school talks about how they've adopted it, maybe adapted it, changed it, implemented it, etc. And schools can go around and see the ones they want and ask questions. We, 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 I think there's appetite for that. To be honest, we're finding some of these interventions catch up, but, you know, are widely available. Some of the others are quite small and are struggling, to be honest, with the, the demand on them. You know, we've kind of created this information, the schools are rightly asking for it, and they're slightly struggling to meet that demand. But um, we're trying to lean on them and, and say, you know, prioritise, get up to Lincolnshire and, and make this stuff available. So, is there interest in this? Yeah? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So I think, I think to be honest, we're going to get out of the way and let Vanessa and James organise it themselves. I think it's probably do a better job. Um, and you know where this, I think where it leads us, um, it's interesting. You know, I suppose Maureen and Maria said the same thing, which is they've. Um, well, Maria said they said they stopped doing all intervention. They, they said right, we'll stop the intervention. We're going to focus on deployment first. That's the kind of thread. We'll get that right, and then gradually they've introduced. Judiciously chosen, that was the word yesterday, two or three interventions that extend exactly what they want to do in terms of teaching in the classroom. So they've, they've gone back to the, to the start and introduced them exactly related to what they're trying to do in the classroom and, um, and done a few interventions really, really well rather than lots of interventions and implemented in such a way that they're not taking the pupils out of the classroom. So he said the TAs have gone some large, have moved where they're emphasis from delivering interventions. To, um, to more beginning in the class and then delivering really um, high quality interventions as well. Um, and then this last, you know, this last recommendation, which I think we're sometimes I think, um, suspect of doing, is that we can do this evaluation, this intervention, and still leave it, and you can show an impact, but then you still leave it for that child to make the connection back to what's going on in the key stage two curriculum or back to what's going on in the classroom, or you know, you're doing a math strategy in a certain way, and it's not the same as what's going on back with the teachers. So I think you know, we need to build, and again, this leads you to time and liaison and all this, but you know, you've got to build time and, and, and also strategies to help those pupils connect the benefits from the interventions back to what they're doing back in the general classroom. Um, so that's, you know, that's a brief covery of those, um, of those kind of interventions. Um, okay, so that's a whip through that. Are there any questions on, on that? Yep. Um, and again, we flashed it last time, but I'll talk about this in a second. But we've created this pack now of, of resources, and one of them is this interventions health check, which is a series of questions that you can, might, you know, might be helpful in going through each of the interventions and thinking about what's the evidence, is it working, how do we know it's working, how's it been delivered, has it changed over time, etc., etc. And um, you know, it's kind of almost going to health check of, of your use of interventions in the school. Okay, um, to be honest, I mean, uh, this was a, this, we were just going to finish up and talking about this kind of process for change, but I think Maureen said everything that, that anything that we could, we could say. I think, you know, these are some of the principles that we talked about even last time, and I think Maureen's exemplified them amazingly, around change team led by the head, giving time to do this, using a full audit, having a small pilot team that, you know, take ownership of this and run this out, it's representative across the school, gradual rollout, I think you've you, you, you said everything there is to, to say on that.